and brown walls. This is Peter and Paul Fortress and this is the birthplace of St. Petersburg. We're visiting Peter and Paul Fortress. Beautiful view on Peter and Paul Fortress on our left hand side. We're going to visit this yellow cathedral with a long gilded spire inside. St. Peter and Paul's Cathedral. That's where all emperors and empresses who ruled the country, the Russian Empire, from St. Petersburg, having St. Petersburg as its capital, starting with Peter the Great and finishing with Nicholas II, the last Romanov on the throne. They are all buried inside St. Peter and Paul's Cathedral. Once again, to repeat, Peter and Paul Cathedral was the first Russian Orthodox Church to be built here in St. Petersburg. They started the construction 1712, when St. Petersburg became the capital of a Russian state, and finished in 1733.
Catherine Leighton, Williams, and wife, Catherine II, and Catherine the Great. The third tombstone to the left, that's where we are. Everybody likes it. So you see, his knees are well polished, hands, you know, people are trying to hold his hand. The face of Peter, though, that's very true to likeness because when he was 46 years old, he ordered to make his life mask, the wax. And so that's how he, his face really looked like. And the spy of the Admiralty, the domes there, that's the Resurrection Church, and the bridge, Trinity Bridge, and right behind you, the spy of Eden Hall Cathedral. So let's say five minutes and we'll be still the largest Russian port on the Baltic, second largest in Russia, after Vladivostok on the Pacific. Uh, it's Delta, St. Petersburg built on the Delta of the Neva River, where it falls into the Baltic the bridge which is a drawbridge, opens at night to let the boats go along the river. Well, on the left-hand side, uh, quite an impressive square with a statue to Vladimir Lenin. Lots of fountains. These days, that's the place where the younger generation would hang out and rollerblade and skateboard and things like that. And quite an impressive building in the background with hammer and sickle, the building of Soviets. There was a plan to put up a city hall in that building, but uh, by the time it was constructed, at the end of the 1930s, I was talking about the huge granite ring and the broken ring of the siege of Leningrad, which lasted for 900 days. And on the other side of the monument, there will be two figures at the bottom of the stella. That's a worker and a soldier. St. Petersburg is actually very famous for changing its name several times. The original name is St. Petersburg. Then in 1914, when the First World War began, uh, they changed the name of the city and for a very short period of time, for 10 years only, the city was called Petrograd. This name existed up until 1924, because in 1917 the revolution happened, and in 1924 the leader of the revolution, Vladimir Lenin, died. And they decided to rename this city the Cradle of Three Revolutions, that's how we had it in the history books before the Soviet Union collapsed. So the Cradle of Three Revolutions, St. Petersburg, was renamed Leningrad. And that was the Soviet time name of the city. In 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed, they finally let people decide where they wanted to live. We had a <coughs> referendum and just slightly more than 50% of the population voted for the returning the city, its original name of St. Petersburg. 52%, if to be more exact. And uh, now we live in St. Petersburg again. Hopefully, no more changes in the future. And go to the Imperial Reception at the Catherine's Palace, which I'm sure is going to be one of the highlights of your trip. Because the Catherine's Palace is going to be opened only for us, exclusively, in the evening. 
then we'll go into the palace. Inside the palace, we're going to see the golden suite of rooms designed by Rastrelli and the famous Amber Room, the so-called eighth wonder of the world, fully restored only in the year 2003. So it's been around for, what's that, eight years now. And after that, in the Grand Hall of the Catherine's Palace, we're going to have a champagne reception. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. In a few moments, we're going to begin the Imperial Reception at the Catherine's Palace.
whether you will be able to hear me. Uh, so, Alexander I, the grandson of Catherine II, Napoleonic War times in here, and you see the original furniture, you see obelisks here, you see the lamp chandelier, and the Australian model.
four major Russian orders, three for countrymen and one for civilians. The most important and the most honor, honor, honorable order of the Russian Empire was the order of St. Andrew the First Hall. And uh, that one had a blue ribbon and a star that richly decorated with diamonds. Tomorrow in the gold room, I'm going to show you how it looked like. And this is the porcelain set.
подойдет кто-то вот у нас, вот, знаешь, там, один из руководителей нас, ну, все построил, ну, закрытый, где-то он тоже ее переделал. И мы все начали, все уже переделывать. И так здорово.
it you've enjoyed the imperial reception yeah. 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 thanks thanks for spending all the money to put that on <laughs> next thing is dinner dinner <laughs> we're basically returning to the palace just for our conveniences to save us some time we're having our 21st century carriage taking us to the restaurant. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Petersburg looks in the night. And the sparkling one is the TV tower. On our right hand side, well, similar to the Eagle Tower. A little bit different. To your left, all the bridges are lit up. On your right hand side, Peter and Paul Fortress is lit up. And look a little bit behind to the bank we're living, the buildings of the Hermitage on our right. That's the city I love. <laughs> Uh, the Moscow Gate from my hotel room window at about 10.30 in the evening. in Moscow Arch here in St. Petersburg, Russia. And this would be the view of the Moscow Arch from my room here. Well, here it is on our left-hand side, bright green with a chariot and glory on top. And on the other side of the arch, the yellow building with beautiful green dome. This is one of the metro stations. Those are marked with blue letter M. All right, well, right now we are heading to Peterhof. I'm sure that you've heard about this beautiful former summer residence of the Russian Imperial family, which is situated at the coast of the Gulf of Finland. It is situated 25 miles outside St. Petersburg to the southwest. That's where we're heading right now. Well, we're starting with Peterhof first, seeing the Grand Palace. Then we're going to see the grounds of the park, which is decorated with 174 fountains, which uh, don't have any pumps. It's all gravity, which drives water. And at 11 a.m., there is a grand opening of the fountains. It takes place every day, accompanied by the music, which is the anthem of St. Petersburg. We're going to be there to see the grand opening. We'll have the fence of the upper gardens and we'll see the upper gardens and the Grand Palace of Peterhof.
look around. Most of the buildings on your both hand sides date back to the end or the middle of the 19th century. Most of these used to be tenant houses and that's where uh, people not native to St. Petersburg would settle around a flat in the 19th century when arriving into the city. In some five minutes, we're going to park, or well, we'll try to park the bus, or at least Sergei is going to stop the bus in St. Petersburg. This area is Dostoevsky area in St. Petersburg. We're going to have lunch in one of the first um, Russian cuisine restaurants, which actually opened in St. Petersburg after the Soviet Union fell apart, which was in 1991, and that one is called Troika. I'm sure that you've heard the word Troika, meaning three horses pulling a sled. to visit two most beautiful and famous cathedrals of St. Petersburg. This is St. Isaac's Cathedral, the fourth highest in the world after St. Peter's in Rome, St. Paul's in London, and St. Marie's in Florence. And if you happen to visit uh, all three of those, St. Isaac's in St. Petersburg is the fourth one. It can accommodate 14,000 people standing and I really hope that there won't be those 14,000 people inside. Why standing? It's not allowed to sit in the Russian Orthodox Church. That's why standing. And uh, the cathedral actually looks a lot more impressive inside than it looks like outside, because outside is just a massive structure with a huge gilded dome. But when you get inside, it is 16 different kinds of marble, 150 paintings, 150 gilded statues, and lots of semi-precious stones. Beautiful.
Well, that was St. Isaac's Cathedral, very beautiful, one of the most impressive, uh, but as always we've got something else to show you and that is the church on the Spilblad. On our left hand side a fountain and partly in scaffoldings, building of the Admiralty. These days it is uh, a naval military school. Uh, but originally the shipyard. And after visiting St. Isaac's you'll say that, well, probably, probably this is the most colorful cathedral in St. Petersburg. Yet, the church on the Spilblad is even more colorful than that. 75,000 square feet of mosaics inside. Decorated with enameled domes and gilded domes on the outside, the Church on the Spillblood is a postcard image of St. Petersburg.
Fully quiet. <laughs> Are you overwhelmed yeah. or tired yeah. or both? Doing fine. All right. Well, everyone is very quiet, and like five minutes before we actually have to be on the bus. Well, that's all right. Um, I hope you're enjoying yourselves. It's a beautiful day here in Saint Petersburg. Oh, great to hear that.
Этот город над Невой С легендарной судьбой Город вечно This is the first shipyard of the country because St. Petersburg was the first seaport in the country and we're approaching the Annunciation Bridge. This is the first permanent bridge across the river which was open at the end of the 18th century and we're going to use that one to cross the river. When we get onto the bridge, look to your left. On your left hand side you'll see the city center with the buildings of the Hermitage, some gilded spires and it is So on our left hand side, the buildings in the distance, kind of at the corner of the next bridge, these are the buildings of the Hermitage Museum. A huge gilded dome on our left hand side, which is sticking out from behind the buildings. This is St. Isaac's Cathedral. And if you keep looking to your left, there is a long gilded spire against the sky sticking from behind the buildings from the bank which we're living right now uh, this is the birthplace of st petersburg peter and paul fortress and crossing old palace bridge a relatively old uh, it's actually 20th century bridge 1903 uh, built only 1856 uh, the first permanent bridge was built across the Neva river before that, they had floating bridges, pontoon bridges. And that's a drawbridge as well. And the 
open from 2 to 5 a.m. at night to let the boats go along the river. So now we have the another photo stop coming and it's coming on the split of the uh, Basil's Island. Right behind you you would be able to see the winter palace and buildings of the hermitage uh, straight along to the right you would see the gilded spire of Pete and Paul uh, cathedral and Pete and Paul fortress across the river straight and behind you those red columns they were lighthouses for the boats coming into the harbor they would have flame um, tar burning on top of those columns and then all the time and straight and left white column building that's there former stock exchange closed for repairs going to be the stock exchange then on the left the zoologic museum uh, th 300,000 taxidermies various animals from mid 19th century there and soils a geographic museum on the other side of the stock exchange and uh, those lighthouses, the split of the Basil's Island it's called. Right inside you see the small Nibar River. That's um, part of that uh, that's Nibar. It makes the split, the large Nibar and the small Nibar. And we'll be going on there. Uh, a famous Russian poet Alexander Pushkin was the first to call it the Bronze Horseman in one of his poems. And so since he did it in the 19th century, we call this monument the Bronze Horseman and that's one of the symbols of St. Petersburg. It stands on the Senate Square and so the building in front of you straight and sort of left, that's the building, uh, uh, former building of the Russian Senate. Uh, all of the buildings along the embankment used to be the palaces of either wealthy aristocrats or the members of the Romanov family. Because this is the very heart of St. Petersburg. On our left-hand side, two red columns are the former line houses. This is the first harbor of St. Petersburg. And we are right now driving along the palace embankment the Winter Palace on our right-hand side, the entrance to the Winter Palace. If you look to your right, see a hanging passage in between two buildings. This is still the Hermitage. And another hanging passage. It is still the Hermitage. And wait for a little while. There will be another hanging passage on your right-hand side over the canal. Here it is. And this building, the green one on our right hand side, it is still the Hermitage. Five buildings all in all, I've pointed out four, because the fifth one overlooks the street on the other side. Yeah, what? 
19th century, Emperor Nicholas I decided that it was um, high time to share the royal art collection with the public, and he commissioned a German architect, Leo von Klenze, to design the new Hermitage building, this was the official name, the new Hermitage building, as a fine arts museum. So the uh, rooms and the uh, galleries, which we are going to see like from the next room and onwards for a while, 
were also available, available to the public since 1852. Rembrandt is always proud of no matter what. And by the way, the museum is a picture that they can have. This one is considered to be the last painting of Rembrandt. Um,
the square. The main square of St. Petersburg is going to be on our left hand side in a few moments. Here it is with the Alexander's column in the middle. That's where the New Year's Eve celebrations would take place. The victory parade. The main one sure takes place at the Red Square in Moscow, but there is a parade every year on the Palace Square as well. to the boat trip while we are in narrow rivers and canals it's not allowed to stand on the open deck because the bridges are very low and there is quite a big risk of hitting the bridge with your head which we don't want to happen at all the great landed the city on the banks of the river lots of rivers and canals the Venice of the north that's how the city was called later after Peter the Great but the boat trip that's the way of looking at the city how its founder Peter the Great landed who loved sailing loved his boat and that was basically the way he would enjoy the city himself in a few moments we're going to sail under Nevsky Prospect. The bridge we're going to sail under is called the Green Bridge. Um, we're going to sail past some of the places we've been to already on the bus, so you'll have an opportunity to compare these two different views onto St. Petersburg. Enjoy the boat ride, enjoy the architecture. Again, these, all these buildings in the historical city center, they are in the UNESCO list of the cultural heritage of the world. Not one building, all of these buildings, the complex of buildings. Here's the Stroganov Palace on our right hand side, pink and white, and Nevsky Prospect, the main street. We're sailing up there right now. Preparing to make a turn into the 
shortest canal of 74 we've got here in St. Petersburg. Remember the Winter Canal? We drove along this river earlier this morning. The name is the Moika River. And in a few moments we'll get to the Neva. But before, we're going to sail in between the buildings of the Hermitage. So you can imagine we drove around the buildings of the Hermitage. We went through all of the buildings of the Hermitage and we're going to sail in between those as well. Uh, the Weeder Canal is not only the shortest one, it's the oldest canal in the city as well, with uh, the oldest stone bridges in St. Petersburg dating back to the beginning of the 18th century. That's exactly when St. Petersburg was founded. After we are through the Winter Canal, you'll be absolutely free to stand up on the open deck because we'll be in the Neva where the bridges are tall enough and there is no danger of hitting the bridge with your head. side is the building of the new hermitage then darker yellow color will be the old hermitage and the yellow arch ahead of you this is the hanging passage connecting the old hermitage the home of Leonardo da Vinci with the hermitage theater in a few moments we'll be in the Neva and the most magnificent view of St. Petersburg, especially in the weather like this, with sparkling water and sparkling gold, is going to be out there all for you. So prepare your cameras. After we pass under the arch, look up. That's part of the museum over there. After we pass under the bridge, get prepared for the view and you'll be most welcome to stand up and take as many pictures as you like Now you can actually get a picture before in the morning when the sky was grey. By the way, very St. Petersburg look of the city. And after when the sun is out and everything is cheerful and shiny.
rivers and canals the territory of the lower bridges, saying the regulation is back. No standing on the open deck. Well, one more turn under the bridge and we are getting into the Moika River. We sailed it partly. The Moika is the most central and the, uh, well, the most beautiful part of the central St. Petersburg. In a few moments we'll be sailing past the Michael's Castle and the Church in Stola, those quite important historical buildings of the city which we wrote has on the bus as well. the son of Catherine the Great, Paul I, was murdered after only 40 nights in there. No one wanted to live in this palace anymore after his death, so it was given to the engineer's school and famous Russian writer Dostoevsky was one of the first students in the engineer's school here in the Michael's castle. Narrowest canal on our right hand side now. this church from the water, there will be three chances of doing that, it should be pretty fast, one of these is right now, before we go under the bridge, St. Luke of St. Petersburg. To the bridge of singers it's ahead of us right now on your right hand side a glimpse of a column in the middle of the palace square this is the second widest bridge after the blue bridge and when sailing under the bridge you can realize how wide the prospect is and it was no widen so this is the original width of the street which is quite impressive from the beginning of the 18th century I'll be meeting you on the bus in 10 minutes after that 
for everyone to get to the bus on their own pace. Take as many pictures or as little pictures as you want. And we'll set to be certain time as soon as we dock. Four different horse statues, they decorate this bridge. And they're supposed to represent different stages of taming or breaking in a wild horse. So you see those by German sculptor Baron von Wood and by the horse statue. with the Papi Rossi, that's Grand Duke Dmitri, and a man with a beard, Kurishkevich, a parliament member, and, and by the door is a military doctor, Lazavet, and by the window, military officer, Suhotin. See them all here, they're all waiting for how the, the, how the poison all works. So there's uh, Felix and Rasputin are now downstairs in their special uh, dining room there. The size of the apartment of Felix is not very big, so. But for Felix, the punishment was very mild. After all, he was married for 10 weeks. So squeeze in here, downstairs in the special dining room of Felix. Oh, so um, you see uh, Rasputin here, uh, he was 47 then, uh, Felix age of um, 28, and uh, Felix was checking on the cakes and wine, and as the plan was originally to poison Rasputin. Cakes and wine, which was not signed, but aspirin didn't work, and so uh, Felix went upstairs to talk to his friends, they decided that Felix should shoot Rasputin and so Felix came down with a loaded gun, shot Rasputin at the back. Rasputin fell down on this very floor, on approximately this, this area he was somewhere here lying down. That's the original floor you see in here. And so the doctor came from upstairs to check on uh, Rasputin and, and uh, he said he's going to be dead in about 10 minutes. And so they went upstairs to wait. And Felix came down back to check. Rasputin was still on the floor and eyes closed. But when he leaned down to Rasputin, Rasputin suddenly opened his eyes, stretched his hands and started to strangle Felix. <laughs> Felix pushed him back, screaming, he's alive, he's alive. And uh, meanwhile, Rasputin crawled up the stairs, the, the, the very stairs he went down, that's the original steps, opened a little door there which led into the garden. And already the next member of the coup saw him walking through the garden screaming, Felix, Felix, bad boy, I will tell everything to the mamachka. Little mama was nicknamed for Empress Alexandra. And then, so that member of the coup, that M6 man, Purushkevich, Russian parliament member, shot Rasputin three times, good British training, Rasputin fell down on the snow, they all came, they hit him with something heavy, then wrapped the body in the carpet, put it in the automobile, drove away, and they thrown the body in the ice hole on the Neva River. Then they, by that time the whole thing went so frantic, they forgot to attach something heavy to the body, so the carpet had frozen to the surface of ice and the body was discovered very soon uh, after two days after that. When they did the autopsy, they found water in his uh, Rasputin's lungs, means he died eventually by drowning. 
then uh, Rasputin's body on the order of Empress Alexandra was bombed and placed in the chapel and in Tsar's village in the suburb of St. Petersburg after Nicholas II abdicated just a few months late in February of the year 1917. Uh, the body was taken of Rasputin taken out of the chapel, driven around the city and then burnt and the ashes were thrown in the air. So they say his restless spirit is still wandering around. Oh. So you have uh, this um, first reception room, you see here, the tapestry room. The tapestry room was uh, decorated with uh, original tapestries from the Hobelin factory in Paris. Uh, the tapestries were donated to one of the Yusupovs, that was uh, Nikolai Yusupov, who was an ambassador of Catherine II to France, to Paris. Uh, the originals now are in uh, the Hermitage Museum. And as in the year 1925, the palace uh, was nationalized and became teacher's club. And so collections of the palace, they went to various state museums, but the uh, interior was preserved. Russian Tsars had their weddings there. So you'll see it now on the right. The Cathedral of Our Lady of Kazan houses. Icon of, patron icon of the Romanov family. Icon of the Virgin from small town Kazan. So that was the church for weddings. Продолжение следует... 
architect Valen de la Motte, you see there and on the right hand side by the same architect the Gostini Dvor, the first Russian shopping mall whose idea of Catherine II to have a collection of small shops in one big indoor area
valley for you there and look at this theater. It must be the most beautiful building lit up in town. in St. Petersburg. Remember the city was founded in 1703, but the real oldest theatre is this one from 1830, so Alexandrinsky Theatre. Будет осуществляться из вагонов 2, 3, 6, 8, 9. Просим вас заблаговременно готовиться к выходу. Dear passengers, smoking is prohibited on trains and at stations. Infringements will be prosecuted in accordance with the legislation of the Russian Federation. You can order an economy or premium class taxi from our train. You can also book a hotel at your destination. To use this service, please contact the train's personnel. Whilst traveling, you can purchase railway and plane tickets Tickets for the Sapsan, Allegro, Lastochka, and Aero Express trains. You can also get a Russian Railways Universal or Travel Card, which will allow you to purchase tickets for the Sapsan train at special rates. On board our train, you can use our Green Zone Wi-Fi internet connection. Passengers in the Economy Class section can pay for services with paying cards that can be purchased on our train. Those who are subscribed to Megaphone as their mobile phone provider can pay for services by having the cost charged to their telephone account. Passengers in the business class carriages have access to the internet for free. As a reminder of your trip, you can buy souvenirs containing symbols of the national high-speed transport system. There is a lottery draw aboard our train. You can take part using your train ticket number. To participate in this raffle, please speak to the conductor. The participation fee is 100 rubles. Your ticket can be lucky.
ask you to please treat our train with respect and keep it clean and tidy for your own comfort. Please contact the train crew in case of difficulties with any equipment on board. For your comfort and safety, this train is accompanied by security officers and each carriage is under video surveillance. Dear passengers, the train is arriving at Leningradsky railway station, Moscow, the capital of Russia. Please don't forget your luggage or belongings. We ask you to inform the crew about any unattended items. After the train comes to a complete stop, please use the illuminated green button for opening the door of your car and alighting. <coughs> Goodbye. We hope to welcome you on board again. So we landed, by the way, at the Leningrad station, still called Leningrad, even though St. Petersburg is, you know, they're much more communist here. And you'll see that it's a very different city, much bigger streets, because Stalin wanted to make it a, an ideal communist city, and he knocked down so much of the medieval, so much of uh, more intimate parts of the city. So the only part really left is around the Red Square, and that you will experience a little bit tonight, and have it give you a chance to to eat some dinner, see the gourmet. You will see the gourmet is the oldest shopping mall in the world. And uh, there are three floors, one ex very expensive one, first floor, second floor a little bit less expensive, and then the third floor is pretty reasonable. And there are three or four cafeterias, and you sit on like on balconies, so it's pretty much fun. Uh, so. It's a nice thing to eat there tonight, so. And you know, you just leave your things on the bus when we get down there now, maybe 10, 15 minutes. We're gonna get off all of us. And uh, then we walk up together to the gum. I have my newspaper here, and just slowly walk up to the gum. But you know, you'll be back to the Red Square with a local guy tomorrow, but the gum is fun to see more than once and very convenient for us. But uh, around eight o'clock, we're gonna leave the red square and then we go to see the metro scaffolding. See the building here to the right? This is the world famous, infamous KGB. But, uh, this is the only building in uh, Moscow where you can actually see Siberia from the basement. Uh, this was feared by everyone. 15 minutes. So this is uh, a bit of central Moscow. If you look into the right here now, this is the but what's a little bit older, uh, yeah, and, uh, technical museum on the left hand side, a bit of a national romantic style, and Russians and some <laughs> churches. And one of the famous Stalin skyscrapers in front of you here. Look at that, another beautiful Russian church. beautiful church coming up ahead of you here. It used to be the city of 800 churches, you know. And now, little by little, coming back some of them. It used to be a very famous hotel there on the left-hand side. Big, enormous, one of the biggest hotels in the world called the Russia Hotel. But 10 years ago, they decided to knock it down. And it's still just an empty space today. And you know, the land they want to sell it, but it's too expensive. No one wants to buy it. Not even Donald Trump. He was.
these uh, stages, but very often this is what happens, you know, on many, many, many weeks of the year. And this will be the revolution technique. the first station you ever built. And they call this the Metropolitan Metalite of Lenin. That's what it says up there. And this station that is called the Theatre Station or the Revolutionary Station. Because as we come down, we will see all these revolutionaries in world
see it starts with the beginning of history. Lenin is over there talking to the masses. Uh, the president was not the Everything is beautiful. Except here, you can see very handsome man with the moustache. And he's the only because they didn't want to destroy the, the beautiful uh, mosaic. So he stands there and he looks at Lenin over there. And maybe you remember that they didn't like each other. And Lenin said uh, very early on that whatever you do, make sure. This is the view from the uh, Radisson Hotel. Yeah, 
entering the square of Belarusian railway station. He, it's here on the right hand side. This green and white building on the right is Belarusian railway station. And on the left hand side, you can see the Church of Jesus Christ. And behind the church, there is a modern complex of offices. And there are many cafes in that complex as well. Just as in this square, the square of Belarusian railway station, there are cafes and restaurants all around. Well, this part of Tverskaya Street has numerous shops. Uh, some of them are clothes shops, and there's uh, also a very nice delicatessen a little bit at the back. And now we are entering the city of Moscow, uh, this square of Moscow City Hall. To the left, you can see the statue to the founder of Moscow, Prince Yuri Dolgoruki. He's shown in such a way as if he's pointing at the place where Moscow is to be founded. And then you can see uh, some buildings which are decorated with dark brown granite. This granite has a story of its own. When the Nazis approached Moscow, Hitler was so sure of his success that he ordered this granite from Sweden. He planned to level down the whole city turn it into a big lake and decorate the banks of the lake with the dark brown granite as the symbol of the Nazi victory over Russia. But his hopes failed and the granite was used to decorate apartment houses in the street. And we are coming to the main, one of the main squares, Manej Square. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see the building of the state Duma. Uh, Dumat in Russian means to think. So this is the lower house of our parliament. The members of the parliament are supposed to think for us, which doesn't always happen, you know. <laughs> That's where it is, the Duma. Uh, then, uh, further on the left-hand side, you can see the theatrical square of Moscow with four theaters situated here. And the main one of them is the building with the columns. It's uh, the Bolshoi Theater, world famous opera and ballet theater. Uh, that's the facade decorated with the quadric of Apollo. The new stage of the Bolshoi is at the back on the left of the Bolshoi. So this is the Bolshoi Theater. And now as we drive further, on the right hand side, you can see the Metropole Hotel which was built in 1903 and it's beautifully decorated with mosaics on the facade. Further on the right is the passage to the parallel street. It is called Tretyakov Passage with very elegant museum of Russian art in the city and even one of the best in the country. And now we are coming into Lubyanka Square and the the name of the square sometimes is associated with the building on the left hand side which is the former KGB office the one in the scaffolds with the clock on the facade just behind this flower bed that's the former KGB committee for state security now it's called FSB federal security service but some of the same people still working there and then on the left hand side you can see the building in the neo-russian style the building of the polytechnical museum it was built as a museum uh, every night from the 1st of september through the 8th of september now from this bridge you can get a perfect view of moscow kremlin on the right and on the left in a distance you can see one of moscow skyscrapers this one is an apartment house. There are seven buildings of this type in Moscow. Out of seven, two are apartment houses. And you can see a beautiful view of the Kremlin to the right, the fortress from which Moscow started. And now we are crossing the Moscow River, the river that gave the name to the city. The world famous St. Basil's Cathedral. 
So you can see the wall of the Kremlin, the wall of the ancient fortress. This wall dates from the 15th to the 17th centuries. And you can see from the embankment also the main cathedrals of the Kremlin, where the Tsars were crowned, baptized and buried. And uh, also from here you can see the Grand Kremlin Palace, the yellow building with the green roof, which is now used for ceremonious purposes, but was built as uh, the residential palace of the Tsars. Also closer to the corner, there is the building of the museum that is called the Armory Museum, where the treasures of the Kremlin are kept and we are going to visit that museum with you as well. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, very soon we shall stop opposite a beautiful cathedral which is called the uh, Cathedral of Jesus Christ the Savior. This cathedral has very unusual history. Initially the cathedral was built in uh, the 19th century to mark the victory over Napoleon. On the left, uh, you can see an old building, an old mansion of the 18th century. This mansion was once a private house of the man whose last name was Pashkov. So it's called Pashkov's house. Pashkov's ho Pashkov didn't have any heirs. He left his house to the city of Moscow and a library was housed there. Two, uh, and later the library was enlarged and today 
this building as well as all the buildings around here are part of the National Russian Library. In front of the library on the left hand side there is the statue of Fyodor Dostoevsky, the famous Russian writer. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get off here. And this is Manej Square. Quite often newlyweds on their wedding day come to Manej Square to have pictures taken. We'll walk into Red Square all together. So here we are getting off, but the bus cannot park here. Sergey will leave and uh, will meet us later on the opposite side. is that beginning from the 1st of September until the 8th of September we are going to have a military tattoo 
in Moscow in Red Square. You could see probably yesterday a big stage in the middle of the square. So there will be representatives of 15 countries performing in that concert. And the cannon was placed on these wheels, which were made 300 years later. And the cannon balls were made just to illustrate how big the caliber of the cannon is. The cannon weighs 40 tons. Its caliber is 35 inches. And it can fire. If it does, it would fire with many small cannonballs, 
that would be spread apart, not with such huge cannonballs that might make the barrel explode. Each of these cannonballs weighs about one ton. Um, so the cannon never fired, but it can fire. And you see it's aiming at the building of president's administration. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest cannon in the world that never fired. This is the biggest bell in the world and guess what? It never rang, right you are. This bell was made in the 18th century in 1737. It is still, yeah. Now we go to the other part of the Kremlin, the Cathedral Square. Please look at your neighbors, your roommates. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Good. the October Revolution of 1917. In the middle of the square there is the statue to Vladimir Lenin uh, as the head of the revolution and from here starts the street which is called Lenin Avenue. Many, there were many statues of Lenin in Moscow. Nowadays not so many have been preserved, bless you. And as we turn, we are approaching a very nice district of Moscow, the famous Gorky Park, the park of amusements that was laid out here in 1929. You can see the park on the left. It's like Central Park in New York. Uh, Gorky Park is named after the Soviet writer Maxim Gorky. 
In this park, there are all kinds of events taking place, especially today on the eve of the birthday of Moscow. Uh, there are concerts uh, on the stages of the park. There are man-made lakes here. Uh, where one can hire a boat, there are fountains, uh, Wi-Fi today, and uh, it looks very pretty with flowers. Uh, and uh, uh, in winter time, the alleys of the park are covered with ice, and people come to skate here and to ski in this park. There are all kinds of amusements for children a very pretty street at the time. At the beginning of the 20th century, the gardens were cut down. Some of the buildings were destroyed to make the street wide. And today you see how wide the street is. It can hold 12 cars abreast in its widest places, six lanes on each side. And although you don't see much of a garden here anymore, the name of the street is still the same, Gardens Ring or Gardens Belt. The uh, street of Old Arbat appeared in the 16th century when it was uh, the limit of the city and the Arabic merchants inhabited that district. Later on, Russian nobility settled down in that district and each house in that district was designed by a different architect. So it's interesting not just only to walk along the main street of Old Arbat, but also through the side streets to look at the old architecture of the 19th century. And um, there are many shops in that street. In the times of Mikhail Gorbachev, it was turned into a pedestrian street, and it was like the orator's corner where the people came to make political speeches. We shall visit the street on the right-hand side, which is called Tverskaya, uh, which is called Old Arbat Street. It's a pedestrian street, uh, which you see to the right, with numerous cafes and restaurants, and sometimes you can see musicians playing in the street and artists painting in the street. So it's quite a nice street where you can see the life of the city. From here, both old and new Arbat begin. On the left hand side, you can see the monument to the unity of the front and the rear during the Second World War. Ballet Academy, and uh, her hands 
were as if they were made of rubber, so soft. They looked like the real uh, wings of this swan. swan the next lake. monument is that of the director of Moscow Circus. You are going to the circus today, and those of you going to the circus will see uh, the monument of this man next to the circus as well. He was the director of the circus, the Yuri Nikulin, and also circus. he was a clown uh, and an excellent comedian. He <laughs> Showing all the countries where they visited, all the uh, and uh, all the dances of different countries that they performed are uh, uh, marked here. And just look at the dates of his life: 1906, 2000, Inspector General, uh, the Dead Souls, and he exposed the corruption, bribery. Uh, the all kinds of vices of the people, and if you read his books today, you are amazed how contemporary they are, because human nature hasn't changed. <laughs> A lot of time has passed, but human nature is the same. So this is the tomb of Nikolai Gogol. But there are books of generals, General and General Van and then a lieutenant of Nikolai who was the pilot. And his room, when his plane was burning already, his room is a patriotic people and loved Russia. And it was only in the years of Mikhail Gorbachev that Mikhail Gorbachev wrote them a letter saying that if they wanted, they could regain their citizenship country, to which they immediately agreed. That the Soviet Union split up into independent states. Instead of one country, the Soviet Union, there appeared to independent states uh, and the Russian Federation was one of them. The Soviet flag was the red flag with the hammer and hospital and she was very clear. You see, uh, while she was alive and when she was in office, she was not really very popular because many people thought she had too much influence on her husband and uh, she was interfering in the public. We find the tomb of the Soviet Russian general Alexander Lebit. Alexander Lebit fought in Afghanistan, he fought in Chechnya, and he later uh, signed his treaty with son who died during um, an air battle in 1943 during the Second World War, and his grandson, uh, also Nikita, he was a journalist, a very good journalist and historian, and, but he had a very weak heart and he died of a heart. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we shall now go to see this convent. It's hidden by the trees. That's why we call it hidden treasure. And it is one of the masterpieces of the Russian Orthodox Church architecture. It's listed with UNESCO. So it's a very romantic place. Sometimes you can see newlyweds here taking pictures because it's a very, very beautiful place by the lake.
and you will see an interesting monument which was a present to children of the Soviet Union from Barbara Bush. And remember, I promised to show to you the White House of Russia, the house of Russian government that was twice surrounded with barricades in its recent history. So now we are approaching the Russian White House. In 1991, President Gorbachev was having a vacation in the Crimea, in the south of the Soviet Union. All of a sudden on the TV there appeared a provisional committee headed by vice president that claimed that Gorbachev was deadly sick and they uh, were taking over all the power. You can see the White House now on the right hand side. Then the White House was the seat of President Yeltsin who was president of one of the republics of the Soviet Union, Russian Federation. So nobody could understand what was going on. And the people came to the White House to, to find out from President Yeltsin what happened. The people surrounded... So you can see here the triumphal arch, ladies and gentlemen. And then you can see on the left-hand side the memorial dedicated to the Second World War. The memorial was opened here in, 18, in 1985 and you can see the museum of the Second World War that is the semicircular building. If you want to take a picture we can make a stop for picture taking. Do you want to take a picture of this complex? Yes. So we'll make a stop uh, not far from uh, here in the street and you will be able to take a picture of this complex. You can see the obelisk. Every 10 centimeters of the obelisk correspond to one day of the war for the Soviet Union. The war lasted for 1,418 days and the obelisk is 140. Olympic Stadium for 40,000 spectators and it's not only the sports events that take place here but all kinds of rock concerts and uh, other events. I'd like to go out to the countryside to Zagorsk going against all the cars
painted specially for this monastery. This is the monastery of the Holy Trinity. So now let us see the Здесь находятся мощи святых, слева мощи Максима. Это ученый муж, который приглашен был в Россию. Thank <laughs> you. 